What if there was a simple test that you could do as a grower that doesn't cost you much money that would let you keep an eye on not only the performance of your plants but their health and their susceptibility to disease? Today I'm with Ben from Green Made Agriculture and he's going to show us how to quickly and easily do your own bricks testing so that you can stay on top of what's happening in your paddock. Ben, you've got some really simple tools here. Can you show us how it all works? Not a problem. Well, so the first thing when you're taking bricks is you want to identify a decent area to get your grass from. The good thing about it is that it's a, a free test that you can do. So you can do as many as you want just within a single paddock. So you'd be zoning things off, looking for what's, um, what's maybe stressed or what's performing well and being able to do a comparison in between that. So after we've decided what area we're going to do, we go around and grab a few tufts of grass from that area decent uh, compound test, a bit of a cross-section area, and put them all in our garlic press. So, This is nothing fancy, this is just a garlic press from the supermarket. You can get proper bricks extractors, but uh, the outcome is the same. This is our refractometer or a bricks meter. Basically, it's just a little tool that you look through and it shows you how much sugar is in the sap that comes out of your plant. So it has a little meter. When you look through it, zero will be distilled water and then anything above that just shows you the, uh, the concentration of sugars in your plant. So when we're looking through that, again, zero is just distilled water with no mineral or sugar in it. Uh, a stressed pasture, something that's under, you know, um, drought stress, water stress, is gonna be down around that sort of 0.5 to two degrees bricks. Um, this, is, this is doing quite well. This is four and a half bricks, which is really nice to see. Shows that there's sugar in the plant, it shows that there's feed quality in the plant, and then that, that also translates into uh, pest resistance. It helps with the plant's innate immunity as well. So Ben, this is something that is not a very difficult test to be doing. How often do you think growers should be testing the bricks of their paddock? I mean, you could do it as often as you want, to be honest, but you know, if you're looking at collecting meaningful data, probably once a season, yep. and then looking at doing that annually so you can start to track trends, looking at how the weather was, you know, information about how the pasture or whatever crop you're looking at was performing that yep. year. Yep. Yeah, really, it really is. You know, it's, a, it's a free test once you have the equipment, so you can do it as much as you want. People might think that the more sugar that's in a plant, the more likely it is or the more susceptible it will be to being eaten by something or pest and disease attack. But that's not truly the case. It's the type of sugar in the plant. The simple yep. sugars are the first to appear. The complex ones are the later to appear. So the higher the bricks reading, the healthier the plant. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it is maybe counterintuitive, but it, it's the opposite of how you described, yeah. A healthy plant produces more in complex sugar because that's feed, and that's driven by the plant's metabolism, whereas a, a dying plant or a dying leaf is what, in a natural ecosystem, pests are there to attack. So they're there to consume the simpler sugars. So if we do this test, and we find that there are low sugars in the grass, and the pasture's looking a bit stressed, what are some of the things that we should be then looking to do? Well, the first consideration is, you know, what types of stress is this under? And some of that's going to be unavoidable. You know, you can't do anything about the weather. If it's yeah. the middle of summer and your plant's stressed, it's because it's the it's middle of summer. It's going to have low sugars. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, other than that, maybe something like a biostimulant, something with plant hormones in it, like a seaweed product, mm -hmm. something that's going to be able to give the plants that metabolistic boost. Yes. Um, otherwise, you know, looking at your cultural practices and Am I smashing this with synthetic fertilizer consistently and damaging the plant's metabolism, damaging the biology and the soil that's really driving that plant health? And I imagine poor grazing practice such as too not long enough off and all of those sorts of things can also affect plant sugars as well. Yeah, absolutely. Can give you an idea of whether your holistic management is on track. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a really good way to validate everything you do. 
For, say, this area, southern Victoria, what would be your ideal bricks level in a pasture at this time of year? Um, I'd like to see it ideally five or six and above. Yep. Yep. You know? So Hard five or say. six is a healthy range? Yeah, it's getting there for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, it depends on the time of day, depends on the time of year. Um, there's no hard and fast rule. Again, I find it's better to track and validate, you know, on farm trials, um, different cultural practices, as you say. But um, yeah, I'd say if your pastures are five, six or above, then they're, they're quite healthy, yeah. Ben, thanks very much, mate. And if people want more information about doing these tests, they can always get a hold of you at Green Absolutely. Mate Agriculture. Yeah, no, pleasure, mate. Send this video to someone who could get on top of their plant sugars for better health. And if you like this kind of video, don't forget, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, because there's plenty more every week.